everyone, and welcome back to the Travel Mug Podcast. And it's our first episode of 2024. Woo-woo! I can't I wait. Know. I know, I know, I know. I am sure everyone feels quite similar in that how is it actually 2024 when 2019 was like just last year? Yeah, right? and even yesterday. I'm pretty sure <laughs> but yesterday. <laughs> But I digress because literally here we are. So we knew you, Jen. How were your holidays overall? They were good. They were busy. We did some traveling. We went up to Cape Breton to my mom's and then drove back home. Listened to my first audiobook in the car on the drive. So well, that was kind of cool. I, I think we'll do that again. We both enjoyed our, our first audiobook. So they're very exciting updates around here. Oh, I lo- no, I love that. Uh, we listen to podcasts sometimes, but we've never listened to an audiobook. That's a great idea. There you go. I'm full of great ideas. <laughs> Welcome to the new year. Jen's going to give us a great idea every single episode. <laughs> um, my holidays were good. Same, like traveling and stuff, but really, really good. It's always good to get home, mm-hmm. I'm living, even no matter where you've been. But now we are heading back into real life. And to start the year, We wanted to begin on a positive note, start the year by sort of putting some good out into the world. So we are going to actually chat about some tips on being a better traveler. As we get into the world in 2024, we just wanted to share some things that you could keep in mind. So to kick us off, my first sort of tip, I guess, on being a better traveler is to learn some of the language. Don't expect everyone to speak yours. Now, I know in a smaller way, we've likely mentioned this before. And this obviously won't apply uh, to every country you're going to, but there are going to be some countries where the national language isn't yours. So let's say you speak English and you're going somewhere that's Spanish. What can you do? No one realistically expects casual travelers to ensure that they're well-versed in the native language. I mean, if you are, that's excellent. But before your trip, learn at least some basic words and or phrases. And why, you might ask? Well, it shows respect and courtesy. It's going to spread goodwill. And it's going to make actually your life easier as well. Even if it is a complicated language and you only learn to say hello and thank you, as an example, it does make a huge difference to service workers and really anyone you come in contact with. It sort of lets them know you're trying. And they're actually going to do the same back to you. I really find this happens even in Canada and Quebec. I find the exact same thing happens as well. So let's really just try, put a little effort in, and it really does bring everyone closer. And I think that's what we all need right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's also like part of the fun of getting ready for a trip is that, you know, maybe learning a few new things. And so my first tip, similar like to what you said, Megan, is Um, respecting culture and traditions and researching them in advance before you go. So it's about respect. Like we said, if you're traveling to a different country, do some research in advance on their cultures and traditions. You don't need to become an expert, of course. That's not what we're asking. Um, But learn a bit. Maybe read a book. Talk to someone who's been there as well or maybe someone who's from there. uh, If you know them, that is amazing. You don't need to necessarily agree with everything that you see, but it is important to be non judgmental and respect what you are witnessing. Also, make sure you dress appropriately. So, especially when you're visiting religious sites, bringing a light, like light scarf type thing that you can like throw over your shoulders is great, or a light sweater that you can throw on can be really helpful. And it's also good to know. Um, if you'll be traveling during any local holidays as well, right? Like things might be super busy um, or they may be closed. So or you don't want to show up at things that you want to do and realize that you are there during a national holiday and everything is closed. That's exactly right. Yeah, great point about the religious sites because some places you have to roll your hat, you have to remove your shoes. So just having that in your mind in advance, it won't be a surprise. And something else we've talked about in regards to this on the podcast before is too knowing local laws. Yeah. So I think it goes right along with what you've just mentioned is being aware of what the law is in the for a variety of things in the country that you're visiting, so you don't get tripped up with something like that as well. Yeah, for sure. Next up, I wanted to talk about shopping local. So there are a few exceptions in the world, such as 
you know, ones that we know is Iceland and Bar Harbor. And there are others where there actually aren't any chains. You won't really have to worry about this. So shopping local will be a breeze. Yeah. Um, however, in a lot of the world, you will find a Walmart. So even when you don't want to. Comfort while traveling is understandable. So it's not a crime to go somewhere, you know, and you'll you'll know what you'll get if you go to a Walmart or something like that. You know it will bring that comfort of home. But we'd really like to encourage you that if you're buying any souvenirs, to try to buy them from locals. There's usually a tag or a stamp if it's made in China, for example. If you're in China, fill your boots. I mean, that's local. Yeah, you are there. <laughs> Done. But you can usually plainly see so really be picky and even ask locals themselves where you can buy something that's been made there. You are a traveler in their country, so try to support them in this way while you're there and bring something home where you can look at it and fondly remember it, knowing that it actually was made there instead of imported there and sold there. So shopping local, I think, might take a little bit of extra work, and sometimes we just want ease. But to be authentic, I think it would be great just to buy something you know was made there. Yeah, that reminds me. Of course, we just had our Christmas holidays here. And when we were in Nassau, we stopped and chatted with this lady and she was selling. Um, and she definitely had Christmas ornaments because that's what we bought. I can't remember what else, but she had made them with like local shells and stuff and put it together. And we stood there chatting with her for like probably 15, 20 minutes. Like her um, niece or nephew had come to Nova Scotia to go to university. So we chatted about that. and bought the ornament and of course now every year we hang it on the tree and we remember that a really amazing experience and so yeah we bought it from the person who made it and it's just a really great travel memory now so yeah yeah we love that. I, very similar we had a, an ornament we bought on our honeymoon in Mexico made locally and we said the exact same thing putting on the tree this year we didn't have a the great long conversation but I do remember of course purchasing it and it was our first year married and it's just one of those things to look back on and it really does evoke memories yeah it does uh, so my next tip is similar so using local accommodations when possible and local restaurants and that sort of thing so like we said we love local and local accommodations and local restaurants and cafes are another great way to support the local people even in your hometown like, you don't have to just do this when you're traveling. No. And I know how tempting it is to go to Starbucks or McDonald's because it's familiar and you know what you're going to order. But grabbing a coffee, let's say, at a local cafe or dinner at a local restaurant supports these amazing small businesses. And eating local could also mean trying the local cuisine, trying new foods and getting a little bit outside your comfort zone. You don't have to, like, fully jump outside your comfort zone, but you could dip a toe, you know. You know, even a baby toe to start. Try the local fruit. It's likely amazing, right? <laughs> Instead of the imported fruit that we get here that traveled thousands. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I just had raspberries this morning that were imported from Mexico. And I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> also, if you're visiting a restaurant, ask the server for recommendations. They know the menu. So let them... Uh, recommend something. And if you're feeling particularly adventurous, let them choose your meal. Um, I have a friend that does this often. They love the surprise. It stresses me out, but uh, they usually, and they're, they're a very adventurous eater. So they don't even usually like narrow down the menu, but sometimes they're like, oh, I'm between these three or four things you choose. And uh, it's always interesting to see the server like, what? I love that idea. I'm going to do that in 2024. I'll report back. That is definitely a goal for me, something I never even thought of, because I guess if I'm trying to decide between two things, I do ask an opinion, but then I still choose. Yeah. No, so even if it's that, I'm going to do that. That's a great idea. Yeah, it's kind of fun. So as for local accommodations, it can be trickier, and we definitely do stay in larger hotel chains ourselves. However, if you can find a boutique bed and breakfast or an inn, it's likely locally owned. Now, Airbnb and Verbo can seem like a good local option. And unfortunately, and we talked about this, I think, on our ethics episode, but these short-term rentals have definitely contributed to the affordable housing crises in many cities. And it's a definitely a tricky thing to navigate. I know a lot of people love Airbnb and Verbo and 
I think they can be great, but in larger cities, it can also be a large problem. But if you can support a local small business over a big corporation, please do. That's all we ask. Exactly. Yeah, I have less of a problem with, I never use Verbo, but I have less of a problem with Airbnb out in the country. Mm -hmm. But you are right. In bigger cities, it's always a bit iffy. We, we rarely do that. So it's it's a good tip for sure. I mean, stay where you can. Obviously, if you need somewhere to stay, people have to make choices. But if if there are choices and, and different varieties of places to stay to choose from, yeah, try to do local for sure. My next tip is to be patient. And I mean, is this a tip just for me? It, it might be. I don't know. Maybe. But when you travel, you are out of your element which I do like. Actually, that part doesn't bother me at all. And really, like most days, not everything or the pace of everything, that's usually my problem, <laughs> will be in your control. So patience when traveling is key. Lines can be long. You could encounter rude people. You might get stuck in traffic. You might even get lost. Or you get to your hotel after your long journey and your room isn't ready. These are just a fraction of the scenarios that really could arise when you're traveling and no one is perfect, but really being patient in situations that are out of your control will make your trip better for you and everyone you come in contact with. It is vacation after all, so relinquishing the fact that everything will go perfectly is something you should do as soon as you leave your home for your trip. After that, understand that, you know, we're adults and not everything is going to go our way. It doesn't always work, but making sure that patience is a guiding principle will be a great way to start and then hopefully go through and end your trip. I'm a, in my everyday life, I guess I'm impatient. I'm not so bad when I'm traveling because a lot of that isn't in my control. Every moment, am I going to be patient? No, but I really do try to think of this. Every day it doesn't really matter as much, although I'm sure Peter would love it. But traveling, I really do try to keep this in mind. What's your sort of thoughts on that, Jen? I feel like I've become much more, much more of a patient person over, let's say, the last like 10 to 15 years and especially traveling. Yeah, I mean, stuff happens out of your control all the time. <laughs> And just like treating it with some grace and, uh, you know, you get through it. You're, I just try to keep in the mindset that like I'm lucky to be traveling. And of course, these things happen and they, some of them are extremely frustrating. But uh, yeah, a little patience goes a long way for sure. I agree. I agree. What's up next? All right. So traveling sustainably, this could be a whole episode, but I do want to note that it is impossible to be perfect and traveling does contribute negatively to the environment. That is just a fact. But small things like using public transportation, using a reusable water bottle and avoiding single use things as much as possible really can make a difference. So maybe sit in the cafe and enjoy your coffee in a real mug instead of getting a to-go cup or pack your travel mug as well. Bring a reusable bag for your shopping, eat in a restaurant instead of getting takeout, and taking the bus or walking or biking can be great ways to get around um, or train as well. So I read that the global tourism industry is responsible for 8% of global emissions, which is more than the construction industry. And I was like, wolf, that, that <laughs> hurts. In the past, I have used Tree Canada's Grow Clean Air program to help offset carbon emissions from flying. And I'd, I'd like to commit to doing that again in 2024. So basically on their website, you put in your travel information and it tells you how many trees that you need to plant to offset those emissions. And then you can donate and they plant trees. So that's something that I'm putting on my, my goal list for 2024. That's excellent. And I assume you will put the link for that in the show notes. Oh, I will. People can find it there. Excellent. One thing you mentioned there that we do while we travel as well is, as you know, we've talked about before, we use the grocery store a lot when we're on our longer trips. Um, and even just buying a reusable bag your first time and then every single shopping trip after that, you take it with you, you use it, and then you actually bring it home and add it to your array, I'm sure, of shopping bags that you have. But that's definitely a good way to do it as well. It's even a little souvenir. Yeah, for sure. 
Now, I want to talk about booking a local experience and being open just to new experiences. We've talked about shopping, eating, staying at local accommodations. So a little bit about local experiences. So booking a local experience and first and foremost, being open to that new experience when available, it will enhance your trip and make you feel closer to the country that you're in. So this could mean booking a cooking class to learn how to make pasta in Italy. It could be a resort excursion in Mexico run by an actual local company. Using a local driver and taking you to local attractions. Oftentimes it's the cheaper way to do it as well. Or maybe even hiring a guide, let's say, in Belfast to show you around and get true understanding of the troubles that occurred in Ireland. We actually did that tour. It was a black cab tour. I can't highly recommend it enough. So He was local. His cab was authentic. He took us to places where we understood the history. It was a win-win for everyone. And it's these types of experiences guided and demonstrated by locals that will also leave you with a lifetime of memories. One of those experiences, make sure you take some pictures and a little bit of video because, of course, memories deceive us after a while. So something to really remember, you know, the country for. And hopefully you can take a little bit of something, you know, Uh, to hold away from that as well. So, you know, whether it's a piece of something or even, I don't know, an apron from your cooking class or something, you know, that you can look back on and, and know that you did something local and you have that with you always. I love that. Now take us to the last tip, and I think it's my favorite. My favorite. Our last tip is be nice to everyone, aka don't be a dick. We love that. We love it. I feel like it's just a guiding principle for life but also for travel so i feel like it's a good way to wrap up this episode just be kind to everyone the airline cabin crew your bus or taxi driver the restaurant workers the people in the hotel just everybody you come into contact with and not that this is a reason to be kind but if you're asking for something or if you're in a frustrating situation, for example, your luggage is lost or something, your flight's canceled, being kind to the person you're talking to means you're much more likely to get a resolution to that situation. So, yeah, but just really be kind. Every human being is deserving of respect. So that's that's the last tip. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's a really good one. And we've all been in t- frustrating travel situations. I remember yours specifically with your car rental in, in Scotland, I believe it was. I've had a flight canceled to here in the Halifax airport before. And I remember it was a long time ago. I'm going to say 2005. And I remember being frustrated and not being as kind as I could have and in the moment and we walked away and Peter's like you weren't as nice to her as you could have been and I don't think I had noticed because I was just personally frustrated it was about me in the moment and it really just shouldn't have been right and I actually took a lot away from that and I probably go to the other way now okay. I'm uber friendly and people are probably like simmer down lady um <laughs> But it was a it was a good learning experience for me, even though it was a frustrating situation. She was in a worse spot than I was. Yeah. So I, I really love this tip and 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 not being a dick just every single day, but especially when you encounter people just trying to do their jobs out in the world. I think that's really great. Yeah. And I think I learned a lot as you know, a young person. I was a server in a restaurant, in a restaurant that was chronically understaffed at times. And uh, People, people who have worked in uh, in the restaurant industry, people who have worked with the public, yeah, get it. You know, <laughs> like if you've been in that situation yourself, you are a lot more kind to people in that situation when you encounter it. But uh, yeah, there's uh, there's nothing like the public. <laughs> and if you've worked with them, you know. And you're exactly right. And I think, too, I don't know why that was my learning experience, because in the late 90s, I worked in a hotel and I had keys thrown at me. So I, I I have experienced it myself. So why I didn't learn from that and it took me a few more years to like truly become the kinder person that I am, I don't know. But you're exactly right. The public be publican. Yeah. Yeah. So on that note, we hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, we would super appreciate it if you would leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. 
it helps new people find our show and uh, we are looking to grow in 2024. We want more travel loving pals. So if you'd like to support the show, you can do that through buy me a coffee or by sharing a show with your travel loving pals. That would be amazing. You can connect with us on Facebook and Instagram at Travel Mug Podcast or on our website, travelmugpodcast.com. And until next time, we'll talk to you again soon. Bye.